Good morning, everybody. My name is Matthew Wilcox, and I'm a technical advisor at Oracle. I'm in the Linux kernel development team. And I've been a Linux kernel developer for uh, about 20 years now. And I'm here to talk to you today about large page, using large pages in Linux. So, the when when we talk about managing memory, the uh, the default unit that we manage memory in is pages. And uh, on on the x 86 CPU, uh, that those those pages are four kilobytes in size. And so when you look at a computer like the uh, Oracle Server X8-8, uh, it's an eight CPU system. It has up to six six terabytes of memory, and that's one and a half billion four kilobyte pages. And that's that's a lot of memory to that, that's a lot of objects to be managing. Now we don't. We, we, we do divide things up a bit. Uh, we, we actually divide things up on a per NUMA node. And so there's only 192 million pages per node. Uh, but still, 192 million pages is a lot. And in case you're thinking that this really only affects large computers, it doesn't. Uh, my, my laptop has 16 gigabytes of RAM. That's 4 million pages. My phone has 4 gigabytes of RAM. So even my phone is dealing with managing a million pages. As, as you can expect, that takes a lot of CPU time to do. Uh, so we, we use this, this thing called a last recently used list. So every time we access a page, we take it out of its current position in the list and we move it to the beginning of the list. And that involves touching a lot of cache lines, um, modifying a lot of the cache lines. And uh, if you're on uh, a, a system that um, has something better to do with it, its caches, those are going to be cache cold. And so we're going to bring a lot of cache misses. And those caches are done with a spin lock held. And there are several patches out there at the moment trying to fix the problem that uh, an LRU list, uh, the lock protecting the LRU is heavily contended. So if our LRU list were shorter, we would not see the same kind of contention that we do today. So how can we solve this? Well, one of the ways that's been discussed is to ma manage memory in larger pages. So just increase the size of a page from being the same size as the CPUs to being the size of a larger size, perhaps 64 kilobytes. Uh, obviously, this approach is going to waste some memory uh, because things that you know, if you if you have a file that's only perhaps eight kilobytes in size, all of a sudden instead of using exactly eight kilobytes for it, you'll be using sixty four kilobytes to to cache it. And maybe that's not a problem with a larger system, but this is also a problem on phones. Remember, and so the phones may actually also have a problem. A bigger concern is that it's hard to maintain the user API because the the user API thinks it can map on four kilobyte boundary. And so if we're only using 64 kilobyte pages and we're trying to map them at four kilobyte granularity, that starts to get quite tricky to do. And so this approach has never really found much favor. And another approach which was attempted earlier on is to manage just page cache memory in large pages. This also has some of the uh, difficulties of managing uh, of, of, of the previous approach, just managing all the memory in large pages, it has some benefit. It has not quite as many disadvantages, um, but it does confuse people because people are never quite sure when it is they're supposed to be using page size and when they're supposed to be using page cache size. And since the two were, were not actually different for very long, nobody noted for, for for a long time. Nobody noticed uh, when people would get it wrong, and so we had a flurry of patches which tried to fix some of this. And in the end, in 2016, we, we just ripped out the, uh, the page cache size macros entirely. So the approach that I chose to investigate here was a, an adaptive use of large pages. That is, keep page sizes the same, but allocate them in multiples whenever we could. And the real question to us then is, well, how do we decide when it's going to be beneficial? And I'll get into that a bit later. So Linux already has the capability of allocating something called a compound page. 
so you, uh, compound page is uh, necessarily uh, a pair of two in size. So uh, if you allocate a single page, that's more than zero page. If you, want to, you can allocate a pair of pages, that's more than one page, and so on. If you want to read more about this, it's called the Buddy Allocator. There's a lot of good documentation on it out there. So the first page is called the head page, and then all the other pages are tail pages, which points to the head page. And if you try and call a function on a tail page like lock page, it will actually redirect to the head page and it will lock the head page. And this, uh, this, this can confuse people when they try and lock one tail page and then lock the next tail page, and then they find that actually they've just deadlocked because they've just tried to lock the same page twice. And I've, I've, I've fixed a couple of bugs along those lines. So we've had the ability to allocate uh, compound, we've, we've used compound pages for, for memory for a while in the form of transparent huge pages. And uh, in 2016, when Kirill added them to TempFS, that was when the page cache first got the ability to store uh, transparent huge pages. Uh, in 2019, uh, Song uh, added, added support for doing read-only huge pages, and he, he was building on the work that Kirill had done. Uh, for tempfs, but now it was also available for uh, file systems which use uh, block uh, block storage or indeed network storage. And the way this is implemented is that you allocate compound pages, uh, but it was very limited in that it would it, you you were only there were only two sizes supported: uh, order zero pages, normal pages, base pages, and uh, PMD size pages. And on x86, that would be in order. An order nine page, uh, which is two megabytes of memory. So, about uh, uh, around about the beginning of this year, I started working on something that I called new transparent huge pages. And so, I, I was recycling a lot of the transparent huge pages work that had been done, and generalizing it. So, a transparent huge page is now no, no longer just uh, two megabytes in size, it could be almost any power of two in size. And that led to, uh, it, because uh, TempFS is a fully in-memory file system, there was uh, little attention paid to things like how um, something like dirtiness or whether the page was up to date um, or whether the page was under write back. All, all the things don't make any sense from an in-memory file system. So we didn't bother to track any of that. Uh, so I, I, I had to make a few changes to uh, track some of that page state uh, for the entire transparent huge page. And then I introduced a bunch of new APIs you can see there, uh, which um, do um, what I think obvious things uh, tell you how many pages there are in a transparent huge page, tells you how many bytes there are in a transparent huge page, tells you the order of a transparent huge pages. I mean, these three things are all linked to each other, but some code wants to know one thing and some code wants to know another, so I provided all three. Uh, THP head, that, so given any struct page, it will, it will give you the head page of it. Uh, and then offset in THP, that, that, that will give you an uh, a byte offset within this particular struct page of whatever you pass to it, and generally that's that's a, a file offset. And so that tells you how far into the page, uh, in, into a particular page, a, um, an address is. When I came to merge, I I I have got a very long way with this approach, and. It was really only when I came to explaining it to other people and uh, trying to justify why I'd done what I'd done and persuade maintainers that they should merge it. And I really started to wonder whether I had indeed made the right decision there. It was definitely expedient to use the transparent huge page uh, code paths. But it turns out that file system authors are generally unfamiliar with transparent huge pages because the only file system that's really supported up to now has been uh, shared, the shared memory file system, tempfs, 
um, other file system authors have paid no attention to it at all. Uh, the tempfs is kind of a special file system off by itself. Uh, regular file system developers don't look at it, whereas um, file system authors tend to look at you know, other file systems like theirs to gain inspiration. So if, if you talk to somebody who works on NFS, they may well know things about several different network file systems. And if you talk to, uh, say, an ext4 developer, they'll probably be quite familiar with how ButterFS and XFS do things, because we're all looking at each other's code, we're all trying to figure out you know, the best way to do something. If somebody comes up with a good idea, then you know, steal it. Um, the, the other thing that I noticed was that, uh, obviously, I was working on x86, um, but only some architectures support transparent huge pages. It, it's actually something that uh, an architecture has to opt into. And that makes a lot of sense if you're talking about the original use of transparent huge pages to do things like uh, insert a, a, a TLB entry that covers a much larger page. That is something that an architecture needs to support. It's something that you, you actually need to write code. Um, for example, the Alpha CPU has hardware support for larger page sizes, but nobody's ever written the code for it. So it's not activated. The Alpha does not support transparent huge pages. Even though the hardware does, the Linux port doesn't. But I don't care. Uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not writing this code in order to make more efficient use of hardware TLBs. I'm writing this to reduce the software overhead because that software overhead has now got to a point where it is just beyond uh, acceptable. So why shouldn't M68K and Alpha and PA Risk and all the other architectures have support for using uh, large pages in the page cache. And one way to do that would be to sort of you know, make some of these things not depend on transparent huge pages or, or, or make transparent huge pages sort of split the config option. Uh, so you could say, well, use it for, for PND size pages or just use it in general. But then I was also trying to explain to file system people exactly what a transparent huge page is. And it became increasingly difficult to justify some of the choices I'd made. And one of those being, when we call the file system's read page operation, do we want to read an entire transparent huge page or do we want to read a specific sub page? Do we just want to read 4K or do we want to read the whole thing? And a file system can ask, or any piece of code can ask, is this page a head page? Is it a tail page? Is it, is it a base page, an order zero page? Um, but actually that doesn't matter. That isn't necessarily, um, just because it's a tail page doesn't tell you, I just want to read this tail page. It might mean I'm, I'm really interested in this tail page, but I want you to read the whole transparent huge page that contains this tail page. And then there's a similar kind of pro similar kind of question with the page fault handler. Uh, do, do we want to satisfy the page fault with an entire transparent huge page? Do we want to satisfy just this specific one? Do we want to say, well, put in as many as, as many TLB entries as we can around this page? Exactly what are we dealing with? And it becomes very tricky. And what I, what I had done is put in assertions, a lot of points that a page definitely was a, a head page. Um, but that didn't really, I mean, that, 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 that worked out well for what I was doing for my prototyping work. But I didn't really want to leave all that in um, for, uh, for, for production code. And I also didn't, don't want to have to replicate this to other file systems uh, when, when other file systems are also adding support for this. And finally, it's very hard to document 
exactly what it is you want. Um, I, I frequently catch myself saying, oh, this must be a head page. And then people would turn around to me and say, well, yes, but can't it also be a base page? I mean, you're not guaranteeing it's going to be a transparent huge page. I say, yes, OK. What I really mean here is it's either a base page or the head page of a transparent huge page. And that quickly made the documentation uh, very messy. So I have decided to adopt a new approach, which I call page folios. And so when an interface says, this is a folio, this, 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 this parameter is a folio, that means it is either a base page or it's the head page of a transparent huge page. And in either case, whatever, is it, whatever operation it is that this function is doing, it is definitely doing it on the entire size of the folio. We're, we're not referring to a specific sub page of, of, of the folio, we're referring to the entire folio. And that way, when somebody passes an instruct page for an operation, you know you're referring to a specific four kilobytes or depending on the architecture, maybe 16 kilobytes or eight kilobytes or something. Um, but if, if, if somebody passes you a folio, you're dealing with whatever size that folio happens to be. And so we, have, we now have to replicate a lot of the page infrastructure that we have. So we have a page dirty macro. Now we need a folio dirty macro because the entire folio has to be tracked as a single unit. And Similarly, for up-to-date, active, right back, locked, and uh, there's about a dozen different flags that we set on, um, on pages. The next step will be modifying some APIs. Uh, for example, the, the read page I was talking about, that's going to want to take a struct folio to indicate that we're operating on the entire struct folio. And then the new APIs that I added just recently for transparent huge pages, I'm going to have to pull those back out and put in these new uh, folio equivalents. Um, there's a couple of new ones in here that, that weren't in the, that don't have an equivalent in the previous slide. Uh, one is folio page. So uh, given the index within a file and a struct folio, it will return you the exact struct page for that particular index. And then uh, page folio. Does, does the opposite is given this struct page, return me the folio which, which this page is in. And you, you, you'll notice that struct folio is, is not a particularly big uh, structure. Indeed, it's, it, it's not really a structure of its own. It, it's, its purpose is to tell the C compiler and indeed the programmer, this struct page is definitely not a tail page. And so you, 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 you literally can just cast between a struct folio and a struct page. Um, but if you do that, you are throwing away the type information which struct folio gives you. And sometimes that's the right thing to do. Sometimes you really do want to, to just cast that away. But usually, you know, I, I don't want to see lots of file, system, file systems shouldn't be doing that. Uh, in, indeed, the core VFS generally shouldn't be doing that. That, that should be something being done uh, really by the macros folio page and page folio. It, it's, it's not something that should be done outside. Maybe some debug code. So once we've got all that out of the way, uh, we can return to our earlier interesting problem of when should we allocate large pages? And some people say, well, we, we, we should allow user space to hint to us. We should, let, we should, we should have an API where, where the program opens a file and then it calls fcontrol and says, I want to use large page. Here's the size of page I want you to use to cache this file. And we could do that. Um, but often the user doesn't know. And if they do know, sometimes they, 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 they tune on one particular hardware and they move to a different hardware and a different decision would have made uh, a, a better decision. Um, there's also the case that files are not usually used by just one program. 
They, they, they may be written by one program and then read by three other different programs. And if all four of those programs set different hints, we don't know which one, which hint we should be using. And I don't like hints because it, it means that uh, the, the user space has to change. And I think this is a general system level optimization and it should just work naturally without anybody changing anything. Another important thing, I think, is that file systems should not have to develop their own heuristics. This is a caching decision being made by the VFS. It's not something that a file system should necessarily get involved with. Uh, there are a few cases where file systems want to tell the VFS, hey, that's a bad decision for me. Can we modify that, uh, that, that, that decision slightly? Um, but they shouldn't have to uh, do that all themselves. And so I was, I, was, I was looking around at how this should be done, and I settled on page cache read ahead, because that already makes caching decisions. It decides how many pages to read ahead, and that's currently kept around 256 kilobytes on, on most systems today. And I enhanced it to decide how large the, those pages should be. And it actually ramps up fairly aggressively uh, in, in my testing, uh, just because I, I, I want to test with a lot of um, large pages. Originally, I thought maybe this is too aggressive. I'm going to want to dial it back some, make, make it not ramp up large pages quite as efficiently, uh, quite, quite as aggressively. But now I'm starting to think, well, maybe, maybe it's right. Maybe, maybe we do want to. Uh, to, to increase it quite aggressively. I mean, there are downsides to, use, to, to using large pages. The larger a page that you use, uh, the, the larger the write amplification. So if you dirty one byte in a 64 kilobyte page, you'll write back 64 kilobytes of data, even though most of it was unchanged. That said, uh, most devices handle that quite well. There aren't really uh, a lot of bandwidth limitations on, on, on most systems. You can, find a, you can find systems that don't have enough bandwidth you know, on their PCIe bus or something, but um, it is, uh, it's, it's, it's generally not a problem. And you find that a lot of storage devices actually perform better with larger sizes. Um, I, I, have a, I, I just recently bought a new SSD, and I discovered that it actually takes longer to read a 512 byte sector than it does to read four kilobytes. And that's weird. <laughs> I mean, I, I would understand if it took about the same length of time, but it actually takes longer, I find really quite weird. So that's an indication that storage vendors are optimizing their devices for having larger IOs and that smaller IOs are, are these days inefficient. I haven't done anything to allocate large pages for writes yet. That, to me, is future work. I want to try and get the work that I've done upstream more than I want to uh, more, more than I want to have writes use large pages. Um, that, that it is a deficit, um, but you know, I, I'm, I, I, I want to push out the benefits that I currently see so that everyone can take advantage of them. Uh, page faults, uh, the, the read ahead code works for both reads and page faults. Uh, but one of the patches that I did recently looks at an existing hint, um, mAdvise huge page. And if you, if you do have that set, then uh, it, will, it will use PMD sized pages. And also it will start to read ahead in PMD sized units, so two megabytes at a time. So the first time you take a page fault, it will actually read four megabytes. It will read the two megabytes that you're looking at, and then the next two megabytes. And then if you fault in that next two megabytes, it will read. It will start to read ahead the two megabytes after that. So it's 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 got the pipelining effect of read ahead, uh, but 
it's, it's doing two megabytes at a time rather than you know, 250 kilobytes at a time. So one of the things that I had to do in order to make the reader head code work <laughs> was that I had to change the API between the, uh, the, the VFS and the file system so that the reader head code would actually add the pages to the page cache and then tell the file system, here are the pages I've added, go off and update them. We used to have the file system, we used to have the reader head code would allocate, the, would allocate some number of pages and then the file system would read into them and add them to the page cache. Uh, but because, uh, because pages have to be aligned, so if you allocate a two megabyte page, it has to be at zero, two megabytes, four megabytes, six megabytes. It, it can't be, you can't put a two megabyte page at one megabyte offset in the file. Um, so because you've got that kind of restriction, it was going to be very, very hard for file systems to know about those restrictions and, and try to add them themselves. So it's much easier to do all that work up in the reader head code and then let the file system just take care of, of working with the page cache, which it already knows how to do. Uh, it was also a nice cleanup. Um, I have not finished this conversion yet. Uh, it was, it's very hard to convert the file systems which use FS cache. Uh, so that cleanup is still in progress. And uh, yeah, we'll be able to delete a few hundred more lines of code uh, once that is in progress, because we'll be able to re we'll be able to remove the support in the VFS for the old uh, read head function, uh, for the old read pages function, and just leave the, uh, the new uh, read head function. So, one of the things, as I think I said earlier, that uh, was not present was not support for doing I.O. to large pages, because it, ShimFS, uh, Shim, Shimem or TempFS is an in-memory file system. There's really been no need to support large pages. Um, so Ming Li added support for multi-page BIOS, and this, this was to uh, this was an optimization um, because pages were often sequential. This was a way of getting a performance boost. Uh, if, if, uh, if, if, if the pages were sequential, then we could describe uh, an I.O. with much, with, 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 with many fewer data structures, with many fewer entries in an array. Um, but this turned out to be very critical for me because it actually, it meant that uh, I didn't have to split up IOs, um, I, I could do a single IO, I could say, you know, here is a 64 kilobyte page, please read all of it. Um, that turned out not to quite work, so I had to fix a bug, but um, in, in the end I, I got support for large pages into the IO map code. Now the IO map code used to be part of XFS, and it got moved out into its, its own code, and, and now it's shared with uh, ZoneFS as well. We hope, I think we all hope, that file systems will be converted to use IOMAP. Um, so far, many of them have not been. And uh, if somebody's looking for a project to take on, then converting your favorite file system to use IOMAP would be a great and very large project. Um, then in collaboration with Dave Howells, uh, we're working on on support for network file systems, and so this, this actually uh, works with the uh, uh, with 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 the FS cache that I was talking about in the uh, previous slide. Part of the problem is that uh, or opportunity is that Dave House is also writing on FS cache rewrite at the same time, and so he and I have been collaborating a lot over the last few months. Uh, making sure that FS cache is going to be THP, uh, is going to make it possible to support THP. There'll still be a certain amount of work to be done in each file system, but the, uh, the, the, the FS cache work will insulate the file system from the details of how the page cache works. And so we may actually see support for all five of these network file systems and transparent huge pages before we see, see support for many block-based file systems. 
and uh, here's a good long list of <laughs> uh, file systems which use buffer heads. Um, and that, that, that's not even all of them. Um, basically, ev every block file system um, uses buffer heads except for XFS and ButterFS. And ButterFS has its own uh, set of problems. It doesn't currently support uh, block sizes not equal to page size. And so there are a lot of assumptions that uh, one struct page deals with exactly one block on disk. Uh, that is being worked on, uh, not by me. And I look forward to collaborating with the ButterFS people whenever they're ready to work with me on it. Uh, they, they, they have more important things to do right now. And that's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm busy enough without working on that at, at the moment. So with the IO path taken care of, we can then move on to looking at what it takes to actually support large pages in the page cache. A lot of the patches that I've already got in uh, simply remove the assumption that a compound page is exactly the size of a PMD. Uh, so in, instead of saying, oh, is, is, is this page a compound page? Yes, then do two megabytes of stuff. And instead, we ask the page, how large are you? And currently, the answer always comes back either I'm a four kilobyte page or a two megabyte page because none of the other code is upstream yet. Uh, but the, uh, the the support is there, and, and that was you know, perhaps 50 patches um, to, to, to rip out all of the assumptions that a compound page was necessarily PMD sized. Another strand of uh, development was supporting operations which aren't just aren't used by TempFS, so nobody had ever done the work to uh, make them uh, support transparent huge pages. Yeah, transparent huge pages. Um, so you know, TempFS doesn't support direct I/O. Um, no, nobody tries to deduplicate uh, files on TempFS, and uh, stable pages are a concept uh, which only makes sense for block-based file systems or network file systems. But anyway, they don't make, it doesn't make sense for backing source. And nobody had ever looked at the, uh, the stable pages code to say, hey, does, it, does this work if it's a transparent huge page? Um, shadow entries are fun. Uh, they, they are used when you, uh, you have a page in the page cache. It goes on to the LRU, and then it, it falls off the end of the LIU due to memory pressure. So it would have still been on the LIU if we had, um, if it was purely time-based, but because the LIU is sometimes, sometimes a lot of memory pressure, uh, this, this, so, in, so this, um, this page gets removed from RAM. But what, rather than just saying, oh, well, then it fell off the end of the LIU list, we effectively extend the LRU list by putting some summary information into what's called a shadow entry. And so if we then refault on this page, we look at its shadow entry and say, well, would this have still been on the LRU list if the LRUs were infinitely long? And if so, we treat it as a refault. And if it would have been taken off the LRU list by now because it's so old, then we treat it as, as a new fault. Uh, this helps us track the working set of a process and helps us make better decisions about when the um, when the process uh, is going to need which kinds of pages. Another big chunk of work I had to do was making it possible to find uh, large pages which were tagged. So if you call something like msync and the, the, the range of the file that you're looking at is within a transparent huge page, and that transparent huge page is dirty, it must find that transparent huge page, even though you're starting after the beginning of the page. And that that proved to be that that's that, that proved to be very hard to do. Um, and it involved uh, changing how the page cache works. So that one isn't upstream yet. That that is still pending. And yet another problem I had is that various page cache functions were returning um, individual pages rather than just the head page. Or as I should now say, the folio. It doesn't return a folio, it returns a struct page. And so when we had um, a, a compound page and we said, 
give you all the pages between here and there, it would actually return each of the individual pages. Whereas what almost every user wants is to be given just the head pages. And so I had to go and audit all the places that use those functions and make sure that they were actually okay with receiving just the head page. And uh, some of those patches are currently in, some are not. Uh, there's you know, probably about 50 patches, so outstanding. And there's some things I haven't fixed, I, I haven't figured out how to do at all. Um, one of them is uh, splitting a folio. So you'd want to do this if, for example, you have, you have a cached file on the page cache, and then you punch a hole in the middle of it. Or you, or you truncate it down. You need to trim off the end of the page. And a lot of file systems will keep uh, sub-page information. So uh, often the block size of a file system will be smaller than the page size. And particularly if you're using a transparent huge page, it will definitely be smaller than, uh, than, than, than the size. The, the block size will definitely be smaller than the size of the page. And so file systems will allocate small data structures and uh, this is, for example, buffer heads are used for. One of the things that buffer heads are used for is to keep track of individual uh, disk blocks and whether the uh, whether they individually are dirty or up to date. And so, when we come to split a page, we then somehow have to redistribute the information that the file system has stored in the head page amongst all of the subpages that the, the, the huge page is being split into. And that is very hard to do. And so I'm trying to figure out various different ways to make that more efficient um, than it currently is. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm currently working around it by saying, well, we only allocate um, we only allocate huge pages on read ahead. And that makes my life a lot easier because um, you know, the, 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 uh, the page cannot be both dirty and up to date and, and not up to date. Um, so I don't have to distribute quite as much information between the, 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 the sub pages as uh, so on. But it, it's, it's definitely a problem that needs to be fixed before I do the write support. Um, because then you can definitely have pages which are partially up to date and and partially dirty, and it gets to be very very complicated, and and you can't lose any of this information because then you you end up actually losing users' data and people don't like it when you use their data. And of course there are many many bugs to fix. Um, that's basically my entire life right now is fixing bugs in in, in this patch set. Uh, and then, of course, there's, there's, there, there are things to do, like allocating folios on right. Uh, we have this uh, kernel thread called khugepaged, which tries to uh, combine individual pages into a transparent huge page, a, a PND size transparent huge page. And uh, right now, it sees that we have um, we have large pages which are not necessarily PND size, and it just gives up. It, it says no. I, I I don't know how to how to deal with that. It probably wouldn't be a lot of work to do. Um, I just haven't prioritized doing it. So if somebody wants a task to take on, that that's that's something that uh, definitely could be done. Uh, so despite saying earlier that I'm doing this entirely for software reasons and not for hardware reasons, there are. Um, architectures which support TLB entries which are larger than uh, order zero, but smaller than, than a PMD sized. And one example of that is 60, uh, ARM supports 64 kilobyte pages. And right now we don't have a good API for telling the architecture, hey, I want you to put in uh, you know, the, the, this, this 64 kilobyte page I've allocated, I want you to put all 64 kilobytes of it into the, into the page tables. And uh, it would be nice to have that. Um, I, I again, this has just not made it to the top of my uh, list yet. 
and I would also like to support folios in ButterFS and DXT4. There are problems with both of those file systems. They're not insurmountable. Uh, we, we absolutely can support them under some circumstances in both those file systems. Um, it's just I, I chose to start working on XFS, and uh, it's, it's the only one currently working. Um, actually, I shouldn't say the only one, because um, uh, Dave Howells has AFS working with transparent huge ratios as well. So there's, uh, I think, the other file system, the other network file systems are not too far behind it. Um, I, I, I want to take a crack at NFS um, fairly shortly, but um, yeah, there's the, you know, I have, I have to, I have to fix the bugs in the code that I currently have before I start writing any more. So, was it worth it? Well, we so kern bench is a benchmark which just compiles the kernel, which is obviously the most important workload. And uh, one of my colleagues was kind enough to run the benchmark for me, and he saw a six percent reduction in kernel time. And so the 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 actual time went down, I think, from uh, hundred uh, maybe two hundred and ten seconds to two hundred and four seconds. But you have to remember that most of that time is spent in user space running GCC. So the 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 the, the bit that uh, we can control, i.e., kernel time, uh, went went down substantially, six percent. I mean that 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 that's pretty good uh, for uh, a benchmark which we optimize so heavily for. Serves our own purpose. So I, I've, I've put the, uh, the Git tree in my slides. Uh, you can go off and take a look at uh, what, what I currently have. Um, so to summarize, um, we get shorter LIE lists, shorter lock hold times, fewer cache misses. Uh, a, a tangential effect is that it's very hard at the moment to allocate uh, larger pages. And we actually allocate large pages for a lot of things. Um, but it can be quite tricky under the, the, there's a lot of fragmentation. A lot of the fragmentation is actually due to the page cache. The page cache will just allocate all to zero pages all the time, and it, it will it will um, make it very hard for larger pages to be created. Um, if the page cache is allocating larger pages, then the page cache can free larger pages too and it will make the entire system less fragmented. Uh, we do larger IOs to storage, and maybe we'll be able to get rid of 16 kilobyte or 64 kilobyte page size configurations. I have, I, while I'm the main developer on this, I'm doing most of the work, this would not be possible without uh, the help of so many people. Um, the, these are the people who I was able to think of this afternoon while I was writing these slides. Um, I know if I, I, I know I missed a song off this list. I'm sorry for that. Uh, but yes, we, we have contributions from all over the landscape. There are file system people here, memory management people, uh, people who are just generally sort of interested in this kind of thing. Um, lots of people are giving their time to help make this possible. And I want to thank all of them. Um, it's it's been um, it's been really fun working on this project. We've uh, we've covered a lot of ground. So um, thank you all for attending. Uh, if you want to ask questions, I'm I'm looking at the chat window right now. Um, I believe we have about five minutes left in this presentation.
Well, I don't see any questions. So thank you all for attending. And uh, I will stop the broadcast now. Please enjoy the rest of the conference.